We have here verse 44 of the 8th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus is reaching the culmination of what's been a rising uh, tension between him and the religious leaders with whom he's having this discussion. And at this point reaches more or less the the, uh, climax of this conversation in which he declares to them, as we find in this language, humace. Uh, this is with emphasis, of course. It's the second person plural pronoun nominative. So you, uh, ek preposition, takes the genitive to patros, you of the father to diabalu, you of the father of the devil, literally, which of course has led to some interesting speculation. But uh, the sense of the text, uh, manifestly enough, is not that he's referring to the father of the devil, literally speaking, although some in the Gnostic world back in the second century tried to draw that sense from it in their uh, sort of Martianite heresy there. But uh, really the sense of it is you are of your father, the devil. Uh, You of the father, uh, and this is more or less an apposition to it, of the devil, esta you are, second person plural, Uh, present active indicative. So you are of your father, the devil, kai tas epithumios. The lusts is the word here. This is the accusative plural feminine noun. So the lusts to patros humon and the lusts of the father of you, theleta. This is from thelo, I wish or I want, second person plural, present active indicative, poyen, the present infinitive, to do from poieo, to make or to do. So you are of uh, your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you wish to do. Akenos, referring to the devil, um, uh, that one, anthropoktonos. Anthropoktonos literally means man-killer. It's a combination of a couple of words that divides right there. So you, uh, uh, that one is a man killer. We would typically render that a murderer. Ain, from a me, I am, third person singular, imperfect active indicative. So that one, a murderer was. Ap, from, takes the genitive, our case, uh, from the beginning. So that one was a murderer from the beginning. Kai, in, takes the dative, te aletheia, in the truth, uk esteken. This is from histemi, it means to stand. It can also have the idea of a dwelling or abiding. Uh, In this case, we have the uh, third person singular perfect active indicative. It could also be the imperfect, but it makes more sense to be the perfect. So, from the beginning, in the truth, he has not stood and continues not to stand or to abide in it. Hoti, because uk esten, because it is not or he is not, aletheia, truth, in him. So it is not in him, the truth, or the truth is not in him. Hotan, lale, the uh, alpha nu at the end of that usually gives rise to a subjunctive, which is what we find here. When he speaks, uh, to pseudos, when he speaks the lie, usually translated a lie, but it actually does have the definite article. So when he speaks the lie, ek uh, takes the genitive tone idion of the his own or his own out of his own resources, out of his own perspective, his own world. Uh, lale, he speaks. So here we have the indicative, here we have the subjunctive. When he speaks the lie, he speaks out of his own resources. Hoti, because psustes, uh, pseudo is the English uh, derivative from this, a liar, because a liar, esten, third person singular, present active indicative, a liar, he are, he is, kai ho pater autu, and the father of it. So here we have quite an indictment by Jesus with respect to these religious leaders saying that they're of the father of the devil and then indicating that the devil in the very core of his being is a liar. He's the father of lies. There's no truth in him. And of course, by necessary inference, the same would therefore be attributed to these who have given themselves over to the diabolical schemes of the devil uh, against Jesus.